This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we take hacking seriously. We break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morse, and today I'm checking out options and your tips. So let's go ahead and start with the help file for Netcat. And I'm going to take this off because it's annoying. So let's go ahead and jump onto my Linux machine. We're going to type in nctachh and we have our beautiful menu. Now we haven't gone over all of the different options that are available to you, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at a few of the other ones in here. So first off, we checked out TAC H, which is the help file, TAC L for listen, TAC P for port, but we didn't get to use TAC G and uppercase G. So these two options, let's start with the lowercase G. This lets you force a data stream through your network to a certain path. Now the uppercase G will track that connection and can be used for troubleshooting network problems. Now after that, as we go down to menu, is TAC O, the one right in the middle that says output equals file. This file is going to dump data into a file of your choice and then it can be used as a sniffer for a man in the middle attack. So one example of this, a really good example, could be grabbing chat sessions while they are transferring one, one, from one client to another computer and then dumping that information into a text file. Now next up we have the S option, tech S down, is also kind of in the middle, so source equals address. So this option could be used for something like this. Netcat can protect your server from unauthorized access by telling you about any new connections trying to make their way in. It could block them entirely or it can also reroute them to another port. Now since Netcat can only handle one connection per instance, you would have to make it open a new instance each time that it is hit with an external probe. So this will make Netcat close inbound connections and then run another instance of it in another program. Very cool. Now some other options that you will notice on this list include TAC lowercase t for TCP mode, TAC U down at the, uh, at the bottom for UDP mode, and TAC R for randomizing the local and remote ports. Now while we aren't going to go into details on all of these options, because there are quite a few, I do hope that this whole Netcat series has really helped you get started. Now in a few moments, we'll be checking out using Netcat with an interactive program without using the TAC E option, but first, let's take a quick break. The Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB rubber ducky, which looks like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard. It can type scripts into a computer ridiculously fast, like this week's pick from Mr. Gray in the forums. He said this one is one kind of on a more serious note and it can be used to recover history and passwords via the USB rubber ducky. Oh, so cool. This is awesome. I could definitely use this sometimes, especially when I forget my passwords because I use different ones all over the place. Now, of course, we couldn't do this show without your support, so we would like to thank you with something special. You can use the coupon code SNUBS with any order off the hack shop for your very own signed hack tip stickers. Thanks again for supporting the show. And now we're back and I've still got my sunglasses on. Now I've got a handy tip from a fan, but also a tip of my own. So let's start off with mine. Now, though it's uncommon, you can also use Netcat as a proxy. So here's an example of what I decided to do. So on my Linux computer, I'm gonna type in nc tech l tech p 1337. And then I'm going to pipe this into Google, www, oops, excuse me, nc, www, there we go, google.com, on port 80. Now when I press enter, this is going to make Netcat listen on port 1337, and it will pipe all the connections to redirect to google.com on port 80. Now if we go into my browser, so I'll open that real quick, and if we go over to 127, dot zero dot zero dot one and then pipe this through that same port one three three seven 
we don't get anything. It's just going to load for a very, very long time. And over in the terminal, we get a whole bunch of gibberish. It doesn't really make any sense. Another one you could try is example.com, which will give you some HTML or it'll just give you a 404 page. Now, we're just seeing this information in the terminal in Netcat, but because we haven't told Netcat to pipe it back out to the browser. So this is going to be a bi-directional pipe is what I'm gonna do next. So I'm gonna close this terminal Go ahead and close that. And we see that the connection was reset. That's no good. So we're gonna open up terminal again. I'll start up Netcat again. Let's go ahead and zoom that in a little bit. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is have Netcat pipe data on port 1337 to google.com at port 80, which in turn will pipe information back out of Netcat on port 1338. So to do this, I have my bi-directional pipe. So I'm gonna type in nc tac l tac p. 1337, my pipe, my first pipe, ncwww.google.com on port 80, and then we pipe it right back. So we do second pipe, and this one is going to be nc tac l, so listen on port, and 1338. Of course, you can change these ports to whatever you want to. So I'm gonna press enter on this, and now in the browser, I'm gonna go again to the same place 127.0.0.1 .0 .0 now if i hit 1337 again nothing happens but if i go up here and type in 1338 we get google.com now if i go back to my terminal you'll also see actual http information that is being relayed back to you from google so how cool it takes us directly to the site super easy now our second tip in previous episodes we covered Netcat with TAC E to create a shell. TAC E will allow you to execute any kind of program, but what if your version of Netcat doesn't have the TAC E option? For instance, the Netcat, Netcat OpenBSD package included with most Ubuntu installations doesn't have TAC E. Well, then it's, it's, there is a pretty simple hack that you can actually use, and it's called a backpipe. So a pipe, sometimes called a FIFO or file in, file out, is a special device that allows us to easily shuttle data back and forth between a process. So we're going to make this using the mknod command. So I'm gonna type in, go ahead and cancel out of there, mknod slash tmp slash backpipe P. So this is going to create the special file backpipe in the temp directory with the P option, which makes it a named pipe. Now we can pipe the input and the output of our interactive program to a listening Netcat session. So for that, we're going to need an interactive program. So how about we use the world famous text adventure from 1981, Zork. Yeah because it's awesome. So I have Zork downloaded in my home directory slash Zork, and I can run it with frots. So I'm gonna type that in, F-R-O-T-Z, and then I type in home slash Zork slash data slash Zork one dot dat. Press enter. So it starts up this really cool adventure game. And of course you can grab your own copy of that over at the link, which I'll link to in the show notes. You can run it anytime with this Frots utility, so you will probably need to install Frots as well with sudo apt-get install Frots. Now with Zork and Frots installed, we need to run something a little bit different. So we can run this file. So I'm gonna type in Frots data slash Zork one dot dat space zero, and then we type in carrot slash temp slash backpipe. So there's our backpipe again. And we're going to pipe this to NC tac L tac P. And I'm gonna use the port one, two, three, four, five, one, another carrot to close that. And then we use slash temp slash backpipe. And finally, we can connect from our other machine. So I'm gonna hit enter on that one. And it gives me an invalid option. Oh, oops. I know why I did that. Okay, so we have the command up here and I forgot to add the home directory slash Zork at the, for, at the beginning. So don't forget to do that. Press enter. 
Now, on our other machine, so I'm also using my Windows box for this example, I'm going to type in a separate netcat command to basically pipe over to this one and get all the information from Zork, all the input and output. So for this one, I'm going to type in netcat, and then I'm gonna type in the IP address of my Linux computer where Zork is running. 31145, same port, 12345, hit enter, and we got it. So it looks very janky on here, but you can basically read what's going on. So west of house, you're standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded uh, something. There is a small mailbox here. So I'm going to type in open mailbox. And the mailbox reveals a leaflet. Uh, let's see, look at leaflet. Zork is a game of adventure, Dana, danger, and low cunning. <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> so now we can have fun text adventure goodness over Netcat. Who knew? So that about wraps it up for, for, as far as our series goes on Netcat, but I would like to know what you would like to see me cover on our further future hack tips. Do you want to see more on Netcat? You can always send me a comment below or you can email us over at tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5 for pineapple funness and more great stuff just like that. I'll be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. Welcome to Hack Tip. Sorry, this is so weird. <laughs>